Hello and welcome to another automation car design guide. Uh, this time with a rather plain car, or actually two cars, uh, I'm just going to go over some uh, basic aspects of car design that maybe you've missed as a new player. Um, or I don't know, maybe you're a more experienced player and you're just unaware of a couple of these things, or uh, how to optimize cars. So first thing we're going to look at is suspension tuning, um, more specifically the bump graph and, uh, well yeah, the uh, slow steering graph, uh, but also a bit of the fast steering graph as well. So um, yeah, I've just sort of thrown together this sort of family car, um, it's not too um, sort of well put together I'd say, uh, could definitely be optimised, there we go, instantly gain some points there because of put adaptive dampers on because cost they're expensive um, yeah anyway uh, suspension so this graph here you see the red line is the front the blue line is the back of the car uh, dropping down a one centimeter bump um, so the start at the same point but obviously the back goes down a bit later um, what you want the want the back to do is catch up uh, usually after the first or uh, so the second bump um, obviously depends about to the second to one and a half seconds usually in this kind of area you want it to catch up so usually sorry yeah soften the dampers a bit it catches up and it's uh, it's a bit more comfortable uh, as you can see here um, yeah other things you want to take into account roll angle uh, usually about 7 degrees is good for a sort of more normal family car. 7 degrees to about 8 degrees, uh, I think is about the sweet spot. Whereas for something way more sportier and aggressive, you'd go down to about 5 degrees. Um, yeah, any lower than that and you're talking sort of extreme track car. Uh, whereas sort of higher, close to 10 degrees is more utility vehicles. Um, you can probably push it to over 8 degrees on something like this, um, if it lets you run some, uh, some slightly less sway bar, um, which obviously is a bit cheaper, uh, even if drivability is suffering a bit. Um, so yeah, uh, just make your car a bit more comfortable, a bit lighter, uh, try and run minimum sway bar really. Uh, at the same time though, make sure you don't bottom out, uh, as that's never a good thing. Um, and um, yeah, okay, apparently, I assume because of practicality going up, raising ride height is uh, really helping family. Uh, I'm just gonna put it up a bit then. Yeah, uh, there you go, that's another thing, running your car too low. Uh, although now we are pushing 10 degrees, so stiffen it up. And here's where I just start spending all my time running it. Anyway, right, this, this graph. Um, the red line is oversteer. Anything over that is your car oversteering. Um, this is done sort of off throttle. Uh, so it's not while accelerating, which is why in BeamNG, cars that are right on the red line do feel horribly oversteery and uncontrollable because they do just spin um, because you're accelerating. Um, the, um, the yellow line is uh, how your car is actually handling. Uh, the uh, white dot with the D next to it is drivability. You want that as close to the blue line as possible. Um, so usually what you do um, as that sort of peak drivability is uh, run less front camber uh, or run more rear camber, run uh, stiffer front sway bars, softer rear, uh, or indeed change tyre sizes uh, to try and get to it. Then, sportiness, you want that as close to the red line as possible, um, but not over it. Uh, if you go over it, that hurts you a lot. And it works the same for the high-speed graph, although there's no ideal point, really. Is it sort of rare that you're ever going over 80 miles an hour and, you know, requiring to turn quite hard. But, uh, yeah, as you can see here, nice, safe understeer. Um, if your line ever points up, that means you've got terminal oversteer. So, so right now, for example, we'll just do something insane. And that was too insane. But yeah, as you can see here, the line's just drifting off. That's because my car is terminally oversteering. So think of it as like a Porsche 911. You turn the wheel on the back, just 
spins on you. That's what that's doing, basically. Whereas when it's going like this, you're turning, you're turning, then you're not turning as much. Whereas if it's pointing up, you're turning lots. Um, next, on to tyres, and um, yeah, it's just a matter of matching them when you can. So, for example, I can make the front tyres a bit narrow, which does help drivability, but you'll notice cost has gone up significantly, and it'll be the same for service costs as well. In fact, let's compare. Uh, 8, 9, 7 there. And if I just put it up one so the tyres are equal, you can see it's dropped a bit. Not as much as I was expecting, but uh, yeah, it does definitely help uh, to reduce cost to keep tyres equal. So yeah, keep your tyres equal widths when possible. Uh, I'll give it. A, uh, I'll show you an exception later. But uh, yeah, if you can, through adjusting camber and things, usually try to do that. Try to avoid positive camber too. If you can, only use negative camber, as uh, positive is just taking away grip. Um, so usually, just running more negative is a bit bad to do. But I mean, there are cases where a bit of positive won't hurt. Uh, next, brakes, and this is just a case of um, trying to find the uh, cheapest and best sweet spot, really. Uh, as a rule, you really want your front brakes to be a bit bigger, uh, or a bit more powerful than your rear brakes. So, um, right, the light line is how much grip you have uh, on both sides, so front and then rear grip. Then the darker line is at how much, how powerful the brakes are. So usually you want this to be a bit higher than the pale lines, and you want there to be a bigger gap between the red lines than you do between the blue lines. So for example, you can see here my blue lines are right next to each other. That's a lot more drivable than um, if I were to have them uh, directly uh, together. Although, there's things like you want to reduce weight where you can because that makes the car cheaper. Um, so yeah, it's about finding it, finding the uh, perfect balance here. Reducing the brakes actually makes it a bit more drivable, or a bit more desirable just because it reduces the costs a bit. Uh, despite it harming drivability and other things. Just because it doesn't really hurt drivability that bad compared to the amount of costs savings there are. So sometimes it can be good to uh, run uh, a high amount of pistons and uh, then uh, a smaller disc size. Also, you usually want to try and uh, run fairly small, um, yeah, fairly small pads, or uh, sorry, fairly uh, drivable pads, as that is a uh, usual, sig usually significant price drop, uh, while also making your car more comfortable. Um, doing this just makes it makes your car way cheaper and uh, more comfortable. So uh, usually, like these kind of de demographics do quite like it uh, when you're running fairly soft uh, pads on gearing now and um, it's a case of uh, trying to use overdrive gears. Now overdrive, at least in automation terms, is just when you have a gear that goes up past your top speed. Um, that helps uh, fuel economy quite a lot so for example if I just drop down to a 5 speed and set the top speed to 140 um, you'd see there is a massive drop off in fuel economy. So yeah, you want to uh, do that when possible. And uh, if you're using electronic fuel injection, uh, don't be afraid to use the speed limiters to uh, reduce the cost of tyres. Um, in this case, not really helping, which is a bit weird. Um, I guess they must really want that single point of sportiness and a bit more prestige. Over, well, actually, yeah, the price difference isn't that bad. Yeah, as you see, going up there. Tyres do become expensive quick. Uh, on hypercars, they're usually your biggest cost. Um, so, uh, yeah, just sort of saving money where you can uh, by adding a speed limiter, only if you've got electronic fuel injection, though, or direct injection. Um, and, yeah, that just helps you uh, keep costs keep costs down a bit. 
Another thing, don't try and uh, cross different um, sort of levels of a demographic. So for example here you've got commuter, commuter budget and commuter premium. Don't try and make a trim cross two of them. As you can see I've got a car here that does well in commuter and fairly well in commuter premium because of its fancy interior. But um, usually it's better to have a another trim that just straight up focuses on um, commuter premium uh, with more expensive seats uh, because then you're optimized for that market and uh, do better. Same for budget. Uh, I find budget especially never try and cross because as you can see there this car's only on affordability of 34% there whereas it's 74% here so um, yeah trying to um, cross especially between budget and um, normal where you'll be competing against second hand cars here uh, yeah don't do that make uh, make extra trims although if you find demographics that are fairly similar for example um, commuter and family both uh, usually saloon cars and they both have fairly similar wants for uh, drivability and comfort um, although you know different ratings uh, they also quite like having safety and both somewhat care about uh, fuel economy also big care about reliability yeah you can usually cross between those again city city eco um, do tend to uh, cross over so making a car for one usually lends itself to the other um, but yeah things like budget and then premium don't try and do at the same time finally another thing I see people tend to do is uh, over engineering their cars chassis usually in the case of putting double wishbone front and rear or something that is too realistic like that um, at least in terms of the campaign doing something like that where you can see what it does to the engineering time there uh, in this case I am running multi-link rear but that's fairly common by 2018 um, I suppose by using 2018 as a bad example but certainly if you're building a car in the 1980s and you've got double wishbone front and rear that's usually a sign that you're probably spending uh, or you're probably over engineering the car for uh, what it is it can depend if it's a big luxury car or something and double wishbone front and rear makes sense but if it's a small family hatchback for example yeah running double wishbone front and rear is just a massive waste of money uh, so you should try and look for it but uh, in other places stuff like chassis material uh, usually you're going to want to uh, try and galvanize it if possible because that will help your reputation in the campaign uh, obviously here it is a bit of extra cost so points do go up if like revert steel same here um, despite the pr slight prestige bonus and uh, yeah production units and engineering time do go up a bit um, but it's a it's a case of um, I mean this is sort of if you went steel steel double wishbone double wishbone or whatever uh, that's usually a sign that you're sort of min maxing and not really taking into account any realism or uh, any sort of future thinking for your company um, it's just more of a concept car thing to do if that makes sense uh, so yeah if you want to make something realistic take that into account and maybe don't focus too much on the demographics next don't be afraid to uh, experiment a little with bodies uh, for example as you can see this is a tiny SUV body and it's using the same engine as that uh, little um, or that big family car that I uh, just showed you but uh, thanks to a more sporty chassis uh, made of aluminium and with double wishbone front and rear yes I know what I just said but this is a sports car it's different uh, in the market it scores well in fun and even track and light sport budget um, just because it's a um, it's much uh, lighter it's a lightweight but sporty car so don't get it in your head that a certain body must be this like this body has to be a muscle car body because it looks like it or uh, uh, you know this has to be an off-roader or something you know experiment a little see what you can do um, you know maybe you find that uh, this kind of body makes a good muscle car body or um, 
something like this makes a good uh, budget um, or uh, convertible or something. Well, n maybe not something like this, but you know, that's probably convertible. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, sort of experiment with bodies, don't look at them and take them for what they are in real life. Try and uh, do your own thing with them. Another thing, uh, be willing to use the uh, plus two seats or plus three uh, in this game. Even though it does look like they murder your stats. For example, if I take them out, um, then I do far better in light sport budget and track budget. And if I put two proper seats in, then I do far better in fun and fun budget and indeed family sport. Uh, you can see that I, uh, I cover a quite large range of... Uh, um, of demographics. This may not be the best example to show you as it's not that refined. But um, yeah, try uh, try testing out the, uh, the smaller seats um, for um, for your uh, your curls and um, see if you can try and widen the uh, the amount of demographics that they cover. Um, also, yeah, this car's got a horrible brake setup because when I was building it originally, I used a mid-engine body. Yeah, that's the thing with mid-engine cars. Usually, uh, you want uh, equal-sized brakes. In fact, let's show that. So, here we go. Uh, mid-engine body, and I know this contradicts what I said earlier. Um, actually, let's keep that 19s. Um, let's not mess around too much. But, um, yeah, on mid-engine cars, don't be afraid to... Uh, run different setups, or indeed rear engine cars especially. Um, yeah, having different tyres front and rear can uh, significantly improve handling. Um, so, you know, it, it's better sometimes to, um, you know, take the extra costs rather than have something totally undrivable. Um, and then, yeah, here on the brakes you can see they're equal sized and uh, they do a pretty good job. Also, why am I running solids? There we go. So, there we go then. Thank you for watching. Um, and, uh, yeah, hopefully these tips uh, will hopefully uh, be useful to you. Anyway, yeah, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you've enjoyed. Until next video, goodbye.